Welcome to another episode of Rod Shop Lockdown. Ah, it's great to have everybody back on the show. Yes, we are all still stuck at home. Uh, and I'm sure everyone is having so much fun. Uh, how's everyone's beer situation? So I, I've, I got nominated for one of these egg thingies. My only thought process was like, how do you guys still have booze left? It makes no sense. So yeah, um... For the show today, we have got Mercia from Motul, South Africa, on uh, that we're going to be talking to. It was actually a great interview. Uh, a lot, very informative. A lot of stuff I didn't know about the brand. Very cool brand. Uh, Motul. But before we get into that, just remember, like, subscribe to the channel and our pages and that type of stuff. Show some support. Um, this episode is brought to you once again by Rockford Fastgate. Uh, keep a look out this week. We'll be launching a new competition with Rockford Fastgate. Um, so, yeah. And listen, if you guys want to get on the show, if you or anyone wants to come talk to us on the show, anything, dude, as long as it's related to cars, bikes, you know, anything with wheels and power and horsepower, it's what we love. Uh, shops, you name it, come, come on the show, talk to us. We're more than happy to speak to everyone. Uh, it's not like we're going anywhere. Give me a call. Um, and let's take it from there. So listen, without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this interview. Enjoy. And we are live with Mersha Janssen from Motul. Mersha, thank you so much for being on the show. No, it's great to, to have a bit of a chat in these interesting times. We'd like to start the show. Tell us who you are and what you do, so everyone knows. Okay, so my name is Mersha Janssen, um, and I'm the area manager for Motul for uh, Eastern, Southern Africa and Indian Oceans. Um, so basically our business unit is Middle Eastern Africa. We have three offices. We have one in Johannesburg looking after the whole of Southern Eastern Africa and the Indian Oceans. Uh, we have an office in, in Morocco that looks after the rest of Africa. And we have one in Dubai that looks after Middle East. So I, I'm the one that heads up the Johannesburg office looking at the bottom, bottom of an Eastern, Eastern half of Africa. Working with motor, you must have at least a little bit of motoring background or be some form of, you know, petrol head. Tell us a little bit about you there. Yeah, so uh, one, of our, one of our values is actually passion. And, um, and Motul is a very, very passionate company. And uh, everybody that works in the business is, uh, is passionate people. So uh, that's definitely some of the questions that gets asked in the, in the interview, you know. And also, you know, if you kind of decide to, to go for an interview at, a, at, a, at an oil company, you have to have some interest in, in motorsport. So, yeah, absolutely. I am. Um, Love motorsport. I've always followed it. Um, you know, a perfect Sunday afternoon for me is, uh, you know, opening a bottle of wine, having some cheese and biscuits and either watching uh, Formula One or MotoGP. You know, that's uh, Sunday's done and ticked, you know, so <laughs> that's not <laughs> happening at the moment. But uh, yeah, and then I also, I also ride motorcycles myself. So, um, you know, I have a, you know, have a true, true passion for for that and uh, yeah, and, and, and love speed and motorsport and have been to many races even before before I started working for Motul. So uh, that was definitely a tick, you know, they uh, they do ask you, you spend a lot of weekends uh, next to tracks. So uh, if you don't love it, <laughs> you're going to, to hate the job. So, uh, you know, that's, that, that's important. Also just to, to live and live the company, live the brand, you know, it's, it's important, you know, and it's, it's um, you know, it's part of the, the, the fun of the job as well. It's because we love it, you know, we're part of, the, part of this journey. That, that gets me to, to this brand, I mean, Motul. Motul's only been in the country for, it's, it's, it has, how many years has it been in South Africa for? You know what, it's been in South Africa almost 30 years on, on cool. the motorcycle side. So, okay. Yeah, so we're very well known on the, on the motorcycle side and there's still a misconception in the market because of it that Motul is a motorcycle oil. Um, and, you know, we have very, very good motorcycle, uh, motorcycle oils, and that is Motul's DNA, you know, I mean, MotoGP, SPK, Motul SPK, you know, that's, that's, our, that's our flagship. But we have a very, very strong car care range as well, and some other, other ranges as well. So the full, full, full PCMO oil range and heavy duty as well. And uh, so, yeah, I've been in the country 30 years on the motorcycle side, but on the car side, I would say it's probably now seven to eight years. So oh, it's fairly okay. new fairly new on the car side, um, um, but yeah, well known on the motorcycle side. But that's why I think a lot of people don't know, first of all, that Motul is uh, 167 years old. It's, we have a lot of heritage, we have a lot of um, experience. Um, 
So yeah, Mosul has been around for a very long time, but because it's only been in the country on the on the car side for for almost eight years, it's not that well known on the car side. But motorcycles, yeah, about thirty years. That history. I mean, uh, Motul. I mean, it's a French French brand, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right? Yes. It's it's amazing how a, a brand a brand like this, like you said, everybody knew it, but. I actually went in and if you start looking at old races and stuff, you will actually start seeing the Motul brand popping up is actually out there. It's always, it's, it's yes. always been yes. there, you know? Yes. 24 hour Le Mans. I mean, we've got uh, so much history and I mean, there's like Ford versus Ferrari movie. I mean, there's some Motul branding in that because back in the days, Motul was already involved with 24 hour Le Mans. So for, from your side, what, what's been, what's been your favorite part of working with Motul? Just from a brand, from a branding perspective. From a brand, you know, I think the favorite part for me was Motul. I mean, it's it's a it's a really cool company to work for, and I think um, one of the things that stand out is is exactly that word cool. You know, I think Motul has managed to make oil cool. You know, and uh, it's it's a it's a very innovative company. You know, so um, that's really really fun to work with. You know, one of the things that they look at as well. Uh, when you join Motul is that you sh should be quite entrepreneurial because things that Motul even, you know, we always say we're probably the oldest startup company there is, you know, we are 167 years old, but we still operate like a startup. Things change, we innovate, we adapt, you know, there's new things happening as well. Our marketing strategies is very, very new age. It's very funky. It's very innovative. It's very, um, you know, it's, it's, it's about relationships. It's about partnerships. It's about passion. Um, and and that's great being part of. You know, there's there's uh, there's never a dull moment at Motul, that's for sure. Yeah, your 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 marketing strategy. I mean, you guys are basically running the same as the energy drinks and, and that type of stuff with getting your brand yeah. out. It's about being in front of it, being involved, and that's why. I mean, Motul. Uh, what what we what I've seen over the last few years. I mean, you guys support almost every aspect of racing, whether it's cars, yeah. bikes, and I mean, King of the Whip. Um, you know. The motocross stuff, um, drifting, I mean, you guys are absolutely everywhere. So from, from that perspective, I mean, what, what is the, the, is this a global strategy for, for Motul? Is it just how you guys are trying to work in South Africa? No, um, it, it's definitely a, a global strategy. I mean, if you just see, um, you know, Motul does quite a, a few big events and have added a few more over the last couple of years. You know, they've become even more visible. I mean, we've been around with 24 Hour Le Mans, we've been around with SBK, we've been around with MotoGP for a very long time, but now we've added Dakar to the mix, you know. So these are these are big events, you know, and the Motul is, 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 is out there and involved with that. So it's definitely a a global strategy that we also, you know, apply apply locally because you know it's the strategy of Motul is also what we want to do. Yeah, and, mm. and I think the reason for it it's two ways. You know, it's it is what Motul is about. You know, like I said, one of our values is is fashion, and it's a it's a fashion driven uh, business. It's a family owned business, and they very they very passionate about racing. You know, so so it's 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 what defines Motul. You know, also. Um, it's where we've been strong as well is, you know, some of the products we've launched are performance products and where it's where we the market leaders as, as well is on the performance side. And one of the things that we often say is that we use racetracks as laboratories because, I mean, those are the perfect conditions to exactly. test your products. You know, if it can withstand the tests in those conditions where you're pushing engines to the absolute limits, you know, uh, you're pushing cooling systems to the absolute limits, you know, and, and we test our products and we develop it there and then we, we roll it out to, to the rest of the market. So, so that's one of the things as well. And also, you know, I mean, the more racing we support, the more the industry grow and the more business there is, you know what I mean? Somebody has to support the industry, otherwise it's going to die. So, you know, that's, that's part of it as well. We have to support it to ensure that we continue to have business, you know, where people, people spend on their cars and people understand the importance of looking after their cars and racing is a way to demonstrate that. Yeah, but I mean, it builds racing builds that brand confidence as well the the whole time. You know, that's I think that's a big part that a lot of companies in South Africa don't see. We had Mike on 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 the show a, a few days ago, and that was something that we saw. There's not a lot of companies like Motul seriously supporting motor industry, um, in and and even motoring brands that are not support that's not supporting, and they're, they're missing that that big step. Now, obviously, with the, the virus, everything's up in the air. I mean, you know, events are being cancelled or postponed and that. 
what what does Motul still have on the cards? What what kind of events can we still look at that you guys are still busy working on for this year? Well, that's that's a difficult question to answer at the moment, you know. And we, um, I actually had a discussion two days ago with um, with the organizer of Roof of Africa, mm-hmm. and you know we're both in a very difficult position to know, now to know what to do because you know that event is only in in December, so. In all likelihood, it's still going to happen. But none of us really know what the next few months hold. You know what I mean? We're not going to be in lockdown still in in December, that's for sure. But are we going to return to life as we knew it? Um, I'm not sure. And when is that going to happen? You know, when is mass gatherings going to be allowed? So when is events going to, when is travel going to be allowed? You know, so um, that, that puts a lot of question marks for us. So it's a difficult and a very uncertain time for us. And we also have to be respectful to the to the severity of what's happening in the world, you know, not promote too soon, you know, events happening. So, so it's difficult. I mean, a lot of our events have been canceled, so they're not going to happen, Um, but there's still a lot going on. You know, King of the Whip has not been canceled. It's been postponed. Um, They're looking at alternative dates. So that's a big one for us. We'll be involved in that. Like I say, Roof of Africa is uh, in December. So, um, so we'll be involved with that if that still happens. It's just now, how do we, when do we start promoting? Yeah. When, when do we commit to it? You know, yeah. it's a very difficult time. We've got nine hours of Kalami, uh, you know, that's uh, again going to happen. Is it going to happen? You know, that's a lot of global, global travel, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we, we've got some teams there as well and some global teams there that we support. So, yeah, big, big question marks. I mean, I'm sure when you chat it to Mike as well with Superdrift, you know when when is when is that going to be back? So um, yeah, I mean we we still put it this way. We're still very committed to our partners. Where if if the events are going to happen again, we're there. We'll be right behind them. We'll support. Um, we'll still sponsor. But it's it's such uncertain time now, and exactly. um, I don't I don't know when the first events are going to be 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 allowed and would it be on a on a smaller scale and you know how are we going to do this or it's going to be like a behind closed doors you know are we all going to sit inside our houses and watch guys whip it up (laughs) 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 i don't know the the scary thing is i mean we we, last night uh we we had a chat with some guys in the u.s um big big red camaro it's the, the fastest camaro in the world um, and they were busy getting ready for Bonneville. And yeah. they, they're talking that Bonneville might even be cancelled. I mean, so that this issue that we that's going on is not just in South Africa. You're looking at motoring events all over the world. Big discussions about MotoGP at the moment. So yeah. I know they're sitting around the tables at the moment and last week deciding whether they're going to cancel the whole season. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's much bigger than, like you say, just our, 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 our country. And you can't look at it and go, okay, well, they can put the event together, live stream it, and just not have the crowds there because the teams, everyone together is actually so, I mean, there's so much involved. I mean, that's, that's the one thing I need to say. I take my hat off to you guys. I, we, I've dealt with events, and I'm always excited when they start, and I'm even more excited when they end. You guys do this every weekend. I mean, you have one big event on top of the other one. I mean, how you do that, I have no idea. Well, I'm so glad that you have some sympathy for us because I think uh, people don't understand what it takes. You know, it's, um, it's one thing. You know, our strategy definitely is to be involved, to activate, to be there. But uh, that takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy. You know what I mean? Mm. So... Uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of commitment. And like I say, that's why they, you have to love motorsport to, to, <laughs> to, to look motorsport. That's, that's for sure. And just also, I think what some people don't understand is, you know, when you go to an event and you get there and it's all set up, you know, just what goes behind the scenes to get it set up, you know, the, to get yes. the branding transported, to get the branding put up, you know, and, and then you watch it and you go home and then all those things have to come down. They have to come back and they have to be clean because they have to be ready for the next event. So it's a big logistical setup and organization behind the scenes to have the events look the way they do. And exactly. And I mean, you guys, so this weekend is motor racing. Next weekend, it's bikes. And then after the weekend after that, it's something completely. And are you guys probably running multiple events during the, uh, on a weekend in different places? I mean, it's absolutely insane. We, we actually have a dilemma this year. Well, if it, if it still continues, um, 
So this year we have Nan of Kalomi and Roof of Africa on exactly the same weekend. So oh, yeah, that's going to be a big one. Well, yeah, so kind of the, the team gets split and planning us to, you know, planning starts, starts months before to make all of that work. Mm. Why don't we get the guys from Nine Hours, Roof of Africa, and everybody on to come and talk about the events and talking uh, so we can try at least keep the conversation around the big events and stuff going? That, that'd be nice, yeah. Because I, I, I'm just, I mean, I, I'm thinking of Samoa Hill Climb that I know they're postponing and stuff as well. The guys can at least come up and talk about the challenges, but what they still have planned and what they want to do. Make, yeah. people, get, make people feel warm and fuzzy knowing that you know, things are still happening the world's not coming to an end. We've spoken about the, your, your industry. Now let's talk, let's talk about the brand itself. Where, where's the product going? What, what are you guys, I mean, we love the brand. How do we get it? Yeah, so from, from, a, from a motorcycle perspective, because we've been around, you know, we've got quite a, a, a wide footprint. You know, we, we, we're available nationwide, um, you know, through, through bike shops, you know, through, um, you know, spare shops. So that's, that's readily available, um, um, like I say, nation, nationwide. From a, from a cost, cost perspective, because it's, you know, fairly new to the country, we're not as widely available. So uh, there's been a lot more focus on Gauteng in the, in the past few years, and we're really regionally expanding only, only now. So um, we will be a lot more available in, um, in the Western Cape, in, uh, in Natal and the Eastern Cape over the next couple of months because we're rolling out quite a bit now. So we're quite frustrated <laughs> with this uh, worldwide situation because we were on a roll and it was, uh, you know, we kind of, the handbrake was pulled in and we did a bit of a, 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 a donut there. But um, yeah, so um, yeah, so that will be really valuable. We're available through, um, through tuners. We're available through workshops, specialized workshops, normal workshops. We are available in retail. We uh, we are rolling out with Mardis now. So uh, oh, nice. at the moment, we, yeah. So at the moment, we are available in in city city Mardis is countrywide. Uh, with more coming on board, um, you know, every, every month. So uh, we'll are you, are you guys looking for more distributors? I mean, if if there's any a shop looking for to to stock your product, um, is there any way we can put details out for them so they can still get hold of you guys? No, absolutely. We, we'd love that because, um, you know, that's, that's our thing now is just to be more readily available to the consumer because we have a lot of people who want to buy the product, you know, love the product, have used it before and you know, just to make it more easily available for them. So, yeah, please um, inbox us on, on Facebook or, or people can, can email me uh, on my email address. I, you know, I can give it to you now or I can give we'll it to put you it, We'll put everything on the bottom of the screen so guys can get... Uh, and the, the, for the conversation so guys can actually click on it and get hold of you guys no absolutely so yeah absolutely we would love that and like i say especially also from a countrywide availability you know we would like to be more available in the rest of the the country as well you know free state northwest um you know we, we we're really pushing hard now to to expand regionally so that's definitely been been the focus for 2020 but we all had to adjust our focus a little bit your, your videos that you guys have put out over the last few weeks, uh, brilliant. I love it. Extremely informative. It's good to see a brand coming out and actually explaining everything behind their product. Um, look, I, I, I've sat in many seminars when it came to, to oil and they sometimes it gets so technical. You have no idea. You need to have a chemical degree to understand what they're actually talking, what they're talking about. Um, where your videos is actually much more informative and it's more towards the layman's terms and stuff as well, which is absolutely great. You guys are taking the time to explain the brand, explain the product and explain why it works and how it works because there's still this idea that uh, it's an oil. Any mm. oil will work. Yeah. Um, mm. we, we, we've had huge issues in, in the muscle car industry over the last few years with sink issues. Uh, we guys are burning and crack, breaking cams and stuff because the, the worlds were losing, uh, didn't have enough zinc and stuff in it. So tell us more about your Know Your Oil campaign that you guys have been pushing. 
Um, yeah, so you actually touched on it, which is, which is quite important, is that the idea behind Know Your Oil is we wanted to teach the average guy in the streets, like, what is oil about, you know, that, that oil is not just oil, and, and what a big difference it will make to, to use the right oil. So the idea is to get the basics there that you can ask the right questions, because people don't understand, and they just assume that, um, you know, other people know. So if you take your car to a workshop or, you know, the guy in the shop that they know, and, you know, so now you can ask the right questions because you've got the basic knowledge. And to understand the difference that the, the right oil can make, because like, like I say, like you said, a lot of people think oil is just oil. But if you use the right oil, not just from protecting your car, where you have, you know, major mechanical issues, to fuel efficiency, you know, just mm. having better fuel efficiency, um, better longevity that your engine will last longer, you know, and I think these days it's important, you know, um, we can't all afford new cars every 100,000 kilometers. And if you use the right oil and the right other products as well, right coolant, right brake fluids, all of that, your engine will last and it will last to two, three hundred thousand kilometers. You know, your gearbox will last. You know, there's, there's this misconception in the market that automatic gearbox you know, it's, it's going to fail at 100,000 kilometers. So let me roll to sell my car because I don't want those issues. But if you do the oil change and if you use the right oil, it won't. Exactly. Um, and, and basically what the idea for us was just to educate people on, on oil, you know, so they understand what it's, what it's about and that they can ask the right questions to know the importance of using the right oil. But you said you guys actually, the, the brand expands way into way more things. Can you just elaborate on that for us? Yeah, so I mean, that's what a lot of people also don't know. And I must say, even people who's used Motul on the, on the motorcycle side for 20 years didn't even know that we have all these other products. So that's a big focus for us now as well. And we're doing some cool promotions now when we, we all get back out there. Um, so we have the, the motorcycle range, we have the, the PCMO range, and then we also have a heavy duty range. So that's for on and off highway. Um, and we have some really great products and we've done some some testing with customers where you know we've some of our products can extend the drain intervals by up to 10 to 20,000 kilometers so the cost savings that you have is massive if you're looking at big fleets um, and then we also have a industrial range so not only the oil going into the cars but the oil being used in the plants producing the cars so you know we've got oh, wow. we've got the full industrial range from cutting fluids sliding oils um so the whole thing from from that point of view as well then we also have a full workshop range um and an additive range so yeah the, the, i mean the full added that people don't know so we've got the super octane boost i had no so, idea that you guys exactly. actually did that so uh engine clean fuel system clean uh, octane booster, super octane booster. Um, yeah, we have uh, we have the full full additive range, um, and then we actually have a car care range as well, which um, we 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 really are launching packaging at um, later this year. But yeah, so full. It's currently called Let's Go. So that's full car care for detailing, car washes, leather care. Um, the full range for that as well. And then um, Motul was also the first oil company to launch the hybrid oil. So we actually have a hybrid oil available as well. Really? But I mean, talking about like uh, the first hybrid oil, I think what a lot of people also um, don't know about Motul, you know, and that's one of the things you asked me earlier, what I love about working for Motul is, you know, the innovation as well. So Motul was the first company to, to launch a multi-grade. It was the first company to launch a semi-synthetic. It was the first company to, to launch a, a fully synthetic uh, product. It was the first company to do ester 4 technology. It was now the first company to launch a hybrid oil. So it does lead with a lot of these new, new innovations and new technologies. Wrapping up everything from, from, from our side, moving forward to the future. What what is what what is the plan for Motul from a South Africa perspective and, and globally? What what is the goals for, for Motul in South Africa? Um, you know, I think it, it's it those things change every day. You know, I'm um I'm, I'm, I'm i literally have calls with France um three times a week, you know, we, we readjust things and we we adapting to, to the situation. But I think what's next for us, I think everybody has acknowledged that life in 2020 is not going to return back to how we knew it before this all hit. It will, will, it will go back in 2021. So we have to adapt to that. Um, we will, there will, some events will happen. 
we'll be right there. Our commitment is there and uh, we'll go big. You know, we'll all go big now to make it special. And also, I think we're all going online now. So uh, for us, um, you know, we're working on a lot of online strategies um, after lockdown even. Um, you know, in terms of restrictions on traveling. So, you know, we're going to move to online training with our distributors. Last two, three weeks, working on some really cool, um, you know, software packages to make it interesting as well, you know, because you don't want to train someone online. You know, we, it's fun, it's interactive, you know, where you can link it to incentives, you know, so that we can work not only with our distributors, but with our, our retailers, the sales staff on the floor, you know, where we can now uh, engage with them in a more virtual space, you know, because, you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings aren't going to happen as often as we used to have them. Um, but make it fun, you know, still. I think that's important to, to not let that become a drag because you miss that human interaction. You miss that, the laughs and, and the jokes, you know. So we, we're working on that. So that's definitely something, and not only in South Africa, but globally. And Motul is also continuing to, to grow the community. You know, I think for Motul's strategy, both digitally and, and outside, of the digital environment is to create a mobile community you know where people belong and i think we'll focus even more on that because that's going to be more important when we all come out of this is to feel that you still belong to something and belong to something that you belong to before that that doesn't change you know that 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 we make it even stronger so we're working on some cool things from that perspective as well so i think what we what we should do is we should have this discussion again in two months <laughs> after lockdown and then 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 we can have the discussion of this is what's going on and then we can run through all the events and and we can go as soon as everything's done and then you know you guys can talk to us more about you know new products coming out uh, outlaying the training systems and stuff i mean that 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 is brilliant and key like i said keeping that information up and keeping the clientele and you know, then we can get some feedback from people regarding if they have any questions to you, uh, to you guys as well. Uh, our website keep changing. We update on, on local events, on, on international events there as well. You know, we have, um, we have something on our website called the oil selector. So uh, people should really go and check it out. I mean, you literally put your car, your model, the year, um, all the specs, and it tells you what oil, what coolants, what hydraulic fluids, everything that you need, any fluid that we can provide you, it will tell you which oh, one wow. to use for your model. Yeah, so it's really good. I mean, it turns you into an oil specialist immediately. We have a dealer selector, so it tells you in your area what dealers are stocking Motul. So go to our website. There's a lot of information, and we constantly also put really cool articles of what is happening in the world um, outside of South Africa, what is happening in South Africa, and what our next plans are is on there as well. Thank you so much for talking to, to us on the show today. Um, definitely, well, I'm going to bring you back, but it's absolutely Have, great to talk to you. Thank you for having me, and uh, let's hope we'll all be out there racing soon again.